Machine can be smart. Hey Siri, movie time. Done. Hey Siri. Hey Siri. Turn off the lights. Done. But sometimes they're stupid. Hey Siri. Turn on the street light in my bedroom. Sorry, I couldn't find anything like that in the bedroom in your home. What's up guys, Benson here and welcome to my channel. So today I want to talk about quantum computing applications in artificial intelligence. AI has been around for a while, but to most people it might be stupid because it can do very simple and basic jobs. Uh, today's AI is getting much better, but still developing at a really slow pace. So that is why I make this video to introduce quantum computing to this field, that we can combine uh, these two cutting edge technologies together to make something, make something great. Let's jump into it. So what is AI? AI is the intelligent machine that can learn, improvise, and evolve like human beings. AI can help us do a lot of things, and as we can see, these AI are really smart and can perform some tasks that we could never imagine in the past. But these are all weak AI, so probably you're gonna ask, what is weak AI? Weak AI is, uh, okay, let's first zoom out to the whole development path of AI. There are three stages of AI. The first stage is the most primitive one, which is called weak AI. In this stage, the machine can only mimic human behavior to perform certain tasks. It's very lacking behind because we have to train a machine in a way that human can expect. The second layer or the second stage is called strong AI. At this stage, the AI can learn, perceive, understand and function completely like a human being. If a machine can act like a human, then they can train themselves and gain self-improvement because machine self-training is much much faster than human so they can easily achieve the next stage which is called super intelligence this means that the machine will be way smarter than human and that would probably mark the extinction of human beings this sounds horrible right uh, but luckily we're still at the lowest stage which is called the weak ai stage and as human beings, we only want to create something that can do boring jobs for us other than replacing us, right? So in this sense, we have to abandon the strong AI and the super intelligence. Is that super intelligence? Yes, yeah, super intelligence and stick to the weak AI. But the bad news is the weak AI nowadays is still at a very early stage. It's very weak nowadays. So we have to do something, take some actions to to boost up this process to make it better, right? And there's indeed a way to do this. In terms of building an AI, I think most of you have heard of this term, machine learning. Machine learning is like the core part, the engine of the AI because it can basically allow a machine to learn by itself. But the question is how can we, you know, tell the machine, how can we ask the machine to learn on your own, right? Um, the best way to do this is to use model. People will first build a model, then feed the model with many level data to train a model. After a certain amount of time, when model training is finished, we can take out the model and use this model to do some certain tasks. For example, sometimes we would like to transfer our handwritten notes to print form, something that computers can edit. Firstly, we should build a model 
then use different level handwritten characters to train the model. After the training is done, we can use the model to recognize our scripts. In this sense, theoretically, the more data we feed the model, the better the model can do the job. But in reality, it's not true. Because when it reaches a certain amount of data, the performance of the model will not get better, while it's still far away from a perfect one. And that is why deep learning comes into play. Deep learning is inspired by human brain, so it uses large neural network architecture. And people fit it with way more data than classical machine learning to train the neural network. Different than classical machine learning model, as we construct larger neural networks and train them with more and more data, their performance continues to increase. I believe you have some questions in mind right now. What is neural network? What is the inner structure of deep learning models? Okay, let's break it down. A neural network is composed of input layer, some hidden layers, and an output layer. In each hidden layer, there are many different neurons. Each connection between neurons is a weight parameter, and here I use different colors to stand for different weights. The bigger weight connection will make the corresponding neuron more important than other neurons. So after the signal passes through all the layers, the neural network will generate a result. Then the network will compare the generated result with the level data. If they don't match, a start over running will begin and the weight parameters between neurons will be changed. The start over will not end until the optimal weight parameters are found. This is only in the training of one data. If we want our neural networks to be more powerful, we need to add more neurons and fit it with more training data so we can get more reliable weight parameters. Based on this mechanism, we need really powerful computers to do the training. And nowadays we can only use classical computer, the supercomputers, and there are two main drawbacks. Since we have so many neurons, weight parameters, layers and data, training model takes a long time. The second one is carbon emission. Some researchers did an estimation and they found that training a large deep learning model produces 626,000 pounds of planet warming carbon dioxide, equal to the lifetime emissions of five cars. That's insane. Because for now this classical computer, the transistor size is the key to the computer power. The more transistors we can cram into the chip, the more computing power we can get. But transistors are already very small and have reached the physical limit, so it's really hard to make more powerful classical computers. Therefore, we have to find a better mechanism to make deep learning training much faster. Model trainings are often the most costly part of machine learning and efficient training methods become especially important when dealing with something called big data. The question is, what is the most prominent way to speed up the training process? The answer for now is quantum computer. If you've watched my another video called, what is a quantum computer? You can probably tell how can we use a quantum computer to speed up the training process. It's quite intuitive because the special mechanism of a quantum computer is the superposition and entanglement. By using these two crazy useful features, we can achieve a so-called parallel computing to calculate all the possible weight parameters at the same time and find the optimal parameters in a short amount of time. But sadly, because of the limitation of nowadays weak hardware, no one had ever proved this in the real life, but people still made some progress. Recently, a group from China reported an exponential speedup of quantum deep learning over the classical deep learning. Let's take a look. They came up with a scheme composed of two different parts, quantum neural network and training. For quantum neural network, it's very analogous to the classical neural network I just showed. The main difference is that the quantum neural network encoded the training data into the probability amplitudes of quantum state. So what does that mean? Remember the superposition of qubits? I showed the superposition by coin in my another video. But when we deal with the real application, we have to be rigorous, right? We cannot use a coin to do the calculation. So we have to invite math to the scene. How can we represent superposition by math? Take a deep breath and don't panic. It can be written in this form. Again, don't panic. Let me introduce the terms one by one. This one 
is called Dirac notation. It can be used to represent the quantum states. This one is the superposition state of the qubit. A and B are probability amplitudes. When you take absolute square, they will become probability, corresponding to two different states, 0 and 1. So the qubit is at a superposition state of 0 and 1. When we make the measurement, it will either collapse to 0 or 1. So in a model, the training data are encoded into A and B. So if we apply the scheme to a model called quantum convolutional neural network, you don't need to understand what is that. Then you can exponentially reduce the number of weight parameters and increase the efficiency. For training, the mechanism is pretty much the same as classical deep learning to compare the generated output value with the label data. But with entanglement of quantum computers, this process can be sped up exponentially. With both the advantages of these two parts, the qubits needed for the quantum deep learning increase logarithmically, logarithmically okay, in log form with the number of neurons, which greatly reduces the memory requirements of the deep learning process. So in the near future, if we can make better quantum computers with more qubits and less noise, we can start to discover some you know, more useful mechanisms of quantum speed up of uh, either machine learning or deep learning. And if we reach that day, I think we are much closer to the real weak AI. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and catch you guys in my next one. Peace.